think there are three things. One, there'll be steady growth in energy demand, but it will be distributed very unevenly. Almost all the growth will be in the emerging economies, China, India, Middle East. The traditional energy consumers, OECD industrialized countries, will actually have a decline, either slow growth or decline in energy. And on the fuel side, natural gas will be the fastest growing fuel, and the next big supplier will be renewables, led by wind and solar and hydro. Traditional fossil fuels like coal will decline because of its environmental uh, emissions, and oil will also decline. The greatest uncertainties are technological change and that's on both the demand and the supply side. On the supply side, we're producing energy, especially oil and gas, from deposits that we never thought would be profitable. And the technology that's led to that is the uh, horizontal drilling on oil and gas wells and hydraulic fracturing is allowing much more oil and gas to be produced in right now in the United States, but that will spread to other countries as well. And uh, the, uh, the other technology would be on the demand side. On the demand side, we continue to improve our efficiency, uh, both in uh, electricity use as well as in the transport sector. I think the main reason is that uh, LNG is still relatively expensive, especially some of these new projects that are uh, coming on stream in Australia. If oil prices stay below $80, it's going to make some of those LNG projects uh, questionable with respect to their profitability. So LNG is good news, but it's not cheap. The number one reason is the cost of building nuclear plants has gone up steadily in the last uh, 10 to 15 years. It's uncompetitive where it has to meet competition with natural gas that's low, low cost. And that's true in North America. In the EU countries, uh, the reason nuclear is uh, out of favor is mainly government policies. A number of governments have chosen to move away from nuclear, Germany, Sweden, and, uh, and then Japan, because of its uh, terrible accident at Fukushima, has, has shut down most of its nuclear plants. So for the industrialized countries, nuclear is either too highly priced to build or government policy. So where almost all the new nuclear power plants will be built was places like China, India, and uh, in South Korea. I think the reduction in cost is the key to the success of renewables. We've seen steady reduction, and that's great. And it has to continue to, to continue to increase its market share because up to now it's required large has required large subsidies governments will eventually start reducing those subsidies. So they're looking for new ways to make renewable viable. An important way is storage. To combine storage with renewables is the perfect solution if we can get storage at a low enough cost, at high enough capacity. You'll, you'll reduce or eliminate the intermittency problem with renewables. So most of the growth in oil will be in emerging economies like China, India, and, and even uh, the Middle East itself. And, and that's going to change the trade patterns. So we'll have less oil consumed in uh, OECD industrial countries. And, all, and as, as you said, two barrels for every one of that will be required and uh, demanded in China and India and other emerging economies. So they're 
they're going to be looking for ways to improve their efficiency. Up to now, they've focused on economic growth, and they have not spent as much money on improving efficiency in the use of oil uh, through either government policy or subsidizing technology. And so I think we'll see a steady increase in improved efficiency in places like China and in India once, uh, once that demand starts taking off. The company is very uh, well positioned in many of these emerging markets, China and, and elsewhere. The center of gravity of energy is shifting to Asia and other emerging economies, and I think that's the way companies like Watsilla will have to move. Watsilla is well positioned to take advantage of the, the trend of natural gas, cheap, lower cost natural gas to be used in the transport sector, especially marine transport. And uh, Watsilla has the technology to take advantage of that if it can bring down the cost of those engines and somehow facilitate the infrastructure required to refuel those in, in the case of marine transport. And the third big area is electric power generation. There's going to be a huge shift away from traditional electric power uh, model of business from the central plant over grid supplying the consumer to moving closer to the consumer with distributed generation and large, in the case of uh, industrial users and commercial users, large generators that, again, Wartzilla is well positioned to gain market share. And I think that will be an area of real strong growth potential.